Let's take a look at posts in Edmodo. By default, when you log into Edmodo, you are seeing all the latest posts to any group that you are a part of. You can filter posts by these different methods because the latest posts, if you're in a lot of groups and you might want to see, okay, I want to see something specific, not everything. You can do them by author, so if you want to see that people are posts by me, or if just by your students, or a direct post if someone posts directly to you, or any of your connections, or if you want to see if someone has replied to you. So these are kind of good for filtering your post if you've turned off all your notifications and aren't sure if someone has replied to you. You can click on recent replies and it'll load up any recent replies to your posts or different posts in your groups. <clears throat> you can also do by alerts, assignments, feeds, polls, or quizzes. So there's different ways to see the different posts. <clears throat> now, if you want to post to something, it used to be that you would have the automatic note was the default one. All you have to do now is click on the type of post you want. So a note is basically a message. It has no character limit. So you can type how long you want, what you want. There is no limit. With all posts, you can attach different things to the post. Do you have to attach something to a post? No, but you can. So if you want to attach a file, like you have some document you want to share with the post, you just click on file and it's just like opening any kind of file. So if I want to attach my Edmodo sign up for the Kagan groups, I can open it up and it attaches the post. Now remember one thing, when you're attaching posts, make sure you s the post is in a, the document is in a file format that people are going to be able to check out. You can attach more than one thing to a post. So just say you found a link to an awesome website and you want to attach that as well. You can click on link. So I'm just going to put in the ad Google. So if you know the link, you can just type it in. If you don't know the link, you have to go out, copy it, and paste it in here. And if you don't know how to copy and paste a link, if you're on the website and you click in the web address or the URL as it's truly called, Uniform Resource Locator, right up here, copy it to highlight. If the whole thing doesn't highlight, drag across it. Then you can right click on it and copy it. Go back to Edmodo. And let's pretend I didn't put that in here right click and paste it and when you click in the thing on the bottom it will retrieve the file the web page title if you don't like what comes up in here you can type whatever you want or sometimes you'll click in this box and something weird will come up so you can name it and you do want to name it because this is what's going to appear in the link and then I click attach and see how it says delicious discover yourself you can type whatever you want the last way to connect is you can connect through your library. And if you haven't learned about libraries, you can watch the videos about learning libraries as well, or you'll learn about them later. You can go to your library and attach any of the documents you have in your library. So if I want to do the links from Edmodo Session 4 docs, I can click on this and click Attach and here. So, once again, a note, however long you want. You can attach a file, a link, or something from the library, and you can do even more. Now, the new feature in the new version of Edmodo is it used to be you just sent it now. It's just sent now. You can now schedule when you want the post to go out. So this is great if you're you know, setting up a whole bunch of stuff for a future meeting and you, it's not for a week and you don't want the information to be posted or assignments for kids. All you have to do is click on schedule and here's the little calendar icon. Choose the day, so I want this to go out Thursday and you can even choose the time. 
if you decide you don't want to do this, you could do send post immediately. And then you click OK. So right here it shows you the schedule. So here's your post, here's where you can add things, attach things, and here's where it's scheduled. Now this section is really, really important. This is the send to section. Now if you're in a group, it's going to default the name of the group right in here. And if for some reason you don't want to send it to that group, there'll be a little X you can click on. You want to make sure that you have in here what group specifically you want to send them to. So if I want to send this to the teachers group, it will default and show you what groups you can send this to. So I can send this to the teachers group. Now, one thing to remember about posting, you need to be a member of the group you want to post to. If you're not a member of the group, it's not going to give you the choice. That's part of the safety and security of Edmodo. You can't post to something you're not a member to. Also, if you want to post directly to a person, they need to either be in the uh, one of your groups or you need to connect to them. And we'll, there's another video tutorial about how you can connect to a teacher. So remember this, only post can only post to groups that you're a member of. You can only post to people that you're connected to or who are in groups that you are a member of as well. And you can do as many as you want. Now some people like to do all groups. I've heard you can do all groups, but remember, if you do all groups, that means it's gonna send it to every group you're a member of. So if you're a teacher using this and sending it to groups of courses, but you're also a member of a teacher's group or an AP Calculus group, it's gonna send it there as well. So be careful with the all groups. So if I wanna send this to teachers and coaches, and I wanna send it specifically to someone You can do that. If you get something wrong and you don't want to send it to that certain group of person, you just hit an X. And then you can click on Send. So I'm not going to send this one, but that's what you do. You click on Send and then it goes. Same thing works with alerts. Now the difference between an alert and a note is like, I'll show you that again. An alert is only 140 characters, so it's like a tweet. So if you're not familiar with tweets, you're probably going, what is she talking about? That means you have 140 characters, including punctuation and spaces. Assignments, you can set up assignments for your students, and there's a separate tutorial to talk about assignments. You can create a quiz, and you can create a poll. And all the functions of assignment, quiz, and poll, and alert, Everything works the same. You can schedule them, you can send to different people. So you've got all the different features that worked in Note. No, but notice, in Alert, you cannot attach things to an alert, like in a post. Assignments, you can attach things. So if you want to attach something, like a link or a document or something from your library, use the Note. And that's the basics of posting.